All right, this is the Biology 2.4 lecture, which covers chemical reactions, activation energy, and enzymes. So we all know in a chemical reaction that you have your reactants and your products. So let's just say that if you have oxygen um, plus hydrogen, that can yield, and if we balance this, uh, oh, I'm wrong, two, that will give us two H two O. Right? These are your reactants, and these are your products. Okay? Your reactants are what you put in. Your products are what you get out. You know this. Now, the one thing to consider, though, with any chemical reaction, to initiate a reaction, there has to be some sort of energy to start it. For example, oxygen and hydrogen. Um, you can have oxygen gas and hydrogen gas but they don't spontaneously f mix to form water, they are a product, unless there's some sort of energy. You have to light it on fire, right? You know, now hydrogen's very flammable. In the presence of oxygen, you'd light it up, you'd go whoosh, make a big flame, and then you'd get water as an end result, as a product. But there needs to be some sort of energy to activate that. Now, in living things, as they're doing all these reactions inside your body or in an organism, there's still that activation energy that exists. Right? So you can have things just sitting around, but it takes some energy to get the, these chemical reactions started. Think of it like a piece of paper. It can burn, and it burns really great, but until I take some fire, which is really just heat, and initiate that reaction, I don't get that combustion reaction. It doesn't just spontaneously burst into flames. Okay, So you need some sort of activation energy to initiate a reaction. some sort of graph or something, um, your reactants, as you're increasing in temperature, I should do reaction. Let's say, and then this is your rate of reaction. As you're increasing temperature, you'll increase your rate of reaction until you initiate your reaction, and then, of course, it won't matter. Okay, so, what we're looking to talk, want to talk about is, you know, like that piece of paper to break down, you'd have to increase the temperature and then you increase your rate of reaction until you initiate this uh, reaction. Let's say lighting it on fire and you need a certain temperature. Now, how can then living things break down paper and wood and so forth and it's not like it's bursting into flames? Well, A, they're using different chemical reactions. Also, they're using some enzymes to help lower that activation energy so they can decompose those things at a lower at a lower temperature, just as kind of an example. So if you have something that can lower this activation energy, we don't have to increase this temperature. We can actually increase our rate of reaction at a lower temperature by lowering the activation energy. Now, this is a pretty important deal. Okay, Living things use enzymes To do this. You've heard that term enzymes before. Enzymes are a type of specialized protein. Remember how we talked about protein as an organic molecule. It's used to, for structure. It's like what we're built out of. But it also takes part in chemical reactions. We'll stumble upon lots of different enzymes um, in this uh, throughout the year as we talk about different chemical processes. They help those processes happen. They lower the activation energy. They help reactions occur. They do not take part in the reaction but they do aid that reaction in occurring, all right? Um, they are not consumed in a chemical reaction. They just help facilitate that chemical reaction. They act as a catalyst. A catalyst helps something occur. So I have an example for you. Um, here is hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. Very similar to water. But we know that it is not water. It's very different. You know, if you put it on a cut, it bubbles and everything else. Now there, there's a, um, there's an interesting thing about this. Hydrogen peroxide is always in a black bottle. And it's in a black bottle because it's a little unstable, and spontaneously it will slowly, especially when exposed to light, it will break down into, you know, gas and water. It will kind of break apart and form. 
okay, these, these gases. Um, and what will break down into water. It will become less effective as well and all this other stuff. Uh, full, cut, full strength peroxides are extremely unstable. Um, even this is just 3% peroxide and we want to keep it in here so it doesn't break down because of light hitting it. Now what if I want to really speed up that breakdown or that, that process of decomposition in that molecule? I can use an enzyme to do so. Now naturally in living things sometimes peroxides are generated. You don't really want those inside of your body or inside of your cells. You've seen what you do when you put peroxide on the outside of your skin and maybe how it bubbles and it hurts and everything else. So you have certain enzymes inside of you called catalase, especially. Which helps speed up this reaction. It lowers the activation energy and allows that reaction to occur really fast. So we want to take a look at that. So we are going to put some hydrogen peroxide in a flask. And we're going to use just some regular yeast, okay, like you use to, to bake with. It has this enzyme catalase in it. Many things do have this enzyme catalase because nobody really wants peroxide on the side of them. And so we are going to actually put some yeast in there and see what happens. Now, while this is happening, I'm also going to watch the temperature and see if it influences the temperature change. There you see the fizz. Hear it? Okay, you can see the bubbles forming there. Remember we said that that H2O2 breaks down into other things. And my temperature has increased a little bit there, a few degrees. So that decomposition of the hydrogen peroxide is being sped up by that catalase enzyme that's lowering the activation energy and then allowing that reaction to happen much quicker than it normally would. And I've actually probably increased about, well, if I'm still going up, I went from around 20 degrees Celsius to about 30 degrees Celsius. Okay, so that means that that reaction is, and it feels warm now, actually, it means that reaction is happening fast enough to release a lot of energy. So enzymes are cool. They let a lot of reactions happen inside your body that wouldn't otherwise happen. Okay.